Hey everyone, it's Sarah. Over the last few days, I was able to finish up the core functionality and user interface for my City app. It still needs some work, but the majority of the features are working on most layouts now. Since the front end is nearly complete, I thought that this would be a great time to put together an end-to-end -to -end demo that includes signing up, searching, and adding API keys on phones and tablets. The latest GitHub links are in the video description. These updates include a new app branch and a new KTOR API branch. Here's the demo. Thanks for following along with me on this journey. Once the demo is finished, I'll go ahead and go over the new functionality.
Hey, I'm back. Now that the demo is finished, I'll go over the new KTOR API routes. First, I get all apps by calling app slash user ID. This route populates the home screen list based on the signed in user. To create apps, I call app slash create. This returns the full record with the new app ID. To get the app detail, I call app slash user app ID. For updates, users are only allowed to change the app's name and the app type. So for this, I decided to use a patch instead of put. So I send a patch request to app slash user app ID. All of the new code in my DAO is pretty straightforward. Since I haven't gone into updating data with exposed yet, here's a quick overview of my new function. So first, you include the select statement where your database ID equals the object ID. Next, you go ahead and set your new values. Exposed updates return an int value, and it's 0 for false and 1 for success. Here, I just return a Boolean, not the whole app record. Instead, for updates, I have a use case that checks for blank fields, checks for dupes, runs the update, and then finally, it gets the new record by the app ID. I also have a similar use case for inserting the new apps. In addition to validating the app's data, it also generates the API key. All of the app routes have their own file, and I handle exceptions using the status pages plugin. I've already gone over most of that in my previous videos, so I'll just skip it here. And that's pretty much it for the API updates. Next, I'll go over my Android app updates. In my previous video, I experimented with closing the KTOR client. I'm still not sure if I prefer this pattern, but for this branch, I just continued on with the concept. So here, I create an abstract class that forms my base API service. In this class, I define my base URL and API key, and I create the client instance here, and then finally, I add the close client function. Then I refactored my project to use separate API services for the user routes, app routes, and city data routes. All of these inherit from my base class and create a nice separation of responsibilities. The app API service includes everything that I need to get my data. It also uses a companion object to define the app specific routes in addition to the ones that are defined in my base class. My API returns more data than my presentation layer needs, so I added some mappers to save some memory and remove some values. I call these from my app repository. So how does the patch work? Here in my view model, I check if the app ID is greater than zero, and if it is, that means we're ready for an update. So I create a new app summary data class, and I set the app name and the app type. By default, Kotlin X serialization does not encode default values that are set in your data classes. So here, user app ID and API key will not get encoded if I don't specifically set them. Which means that back in my view model, when I create the app name and the app type, these are the only two fields that get serialized and sent as JSON to my KTOR backend. A better approach would probably be to define the patch rules more specifically and maybe create a separate data class for patching, but for now, this works great for my app. For the UI, Jetpack Compose offers some really easy ways to do some really cool stuff. For the share sheet, I created a little helper function in my util class that basically creates the intent to share the API key as plain text. Then I can easily call this helper function from my onClick event in my app chip composable. Here, I pass the selected API key, and I go ahead and start the activity. To copy the API key to the clipboard, I get the local clipboard manager. Then I call set text on the onClick event for my app chip composable, and it's really just that easy. And that's pretty much it for the new functionality. Feel free to check out the rest of the code in the new branches and let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thanks for watching.